Hello everyone, Mike Rempel from Excel Bytes with today's Excel Bytes blog post. Today we're going to take a look at how to extract a dynamic list when the criteria has multiple items or is a subset of that list and you have to extract those items based on several different criteria. So let's see how we can do that in Excel. So here's our scenario. I have a list of a hundred names here and their division number and what that division represents. And you can see the numbers here, 21 through 28, that's southeast, northeast, etc. And again, those abbreviations. And what I want to do in columns I and J is pull into this area a list of those names and their divisions which match any one of these three, 21, 26, or 27. And we're going to use an option in Excel called Array Constants. Now, Array Constants are a list of values that can be used as an argument in your Array formulas. So let's see how we're going to do that. So in cell I2, we're going to use basically an index formula. So equals index. And my array is going to be the names in column A. I'll hit F4 to lock those comma and to determine my row number we're going to use the small function and the if function to do that now my logical test is going to be do the numbers in column b which is the divisions equal and this is where we're going to insert our array constant we're going to put it in curly brackets and we're going to have 21 comma 26 comma 27 close my curly brackets if, since that's my logical test, if those values are true, then I want you to return the row number of those names. I'll lock that with F4, close my row number function, close my if statement, and now for the k value of the small function, I'm going to just use row 1, 1. And as I drag that down, that'll become a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5. So that'll give me the first smallest row number, the second smallest row number, the third smallest row number in that list that match that criteria. Now, because I'm starting my data set in row 2, I have to subtract a 1 here. And for column number, there's one column. I could have either left that blank or put in a 1 there. And I'm going to wrap this in an if error function so that if there are no more values, it'll return. In this case, I'm going to put double quotes, which will give a blank. And it's an array formula, so I have to enter it with Control Shift Enter. And the first one that pops up is Rahima Mosley. And if I see that, that's a 26. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this all the way down. Go back up, and now here is my list. And now I'm just going to use a lookup function. I'm using Office 365, so I'm going to use XLOOKUP. You can use VLOOKUP to do the same thing. So I'll just say equals XLOOKUP. My lookup value is going to be this name. My lookup array is the list in column A. I'll lock that. And my return array is going to be the division number. Again, lock that, close that, and again, I'm going to wrap this in an if error function. End, comma, double quotes to put a blank, hit enter, copy that down, and let's just double check. If I use my filter, you can see all of these are either a 21, a 26, or a 27. So using an array constant here allows me to have several criteria items that can be used in my lookup or in my uh, logical test in my if function. Now, if you have a longer list and you don't want to list them all here, what you can do is you can create a named range to identify those numbers. So I'm going to go to the formula tab name manager, I'm going to say new, and I'm going to call this div for division. And here I'm going to say this equals 
my curly brackets, 21, 26, 27, close my curly brackets there, say OK, and close. Now, in my formula, instead of listing the array constants here, I can just reference that named range I have, Control shift enter copy that down, and now that cleans up my formula. But again, if I highlight that div and hit F9, it's just those same three array constants that we have. Now there's one other trick I want to show you. Let's say you have a long list here of items that you need to use as your array constants. And you don't want to have to sit and type them all out, but you have them in a list like this. An easy way to create an array constant of a list such as this, now I'm going to show you with numbers, um, is going to be, again, if you're using Office 365, using the text join function. So I'm going to say equals text join. My delimiter is going to be a comma. Um, do I want to ignore or include empty cells? It's irrelevant. I don't have any, so I'm just going to put a one for true. And what is my text list? I'm going to select that list, close my parentheses, hit enter. Now it's put that list horizontally with a separator of a comma. Now I'm going to convert that to its values. And while I have that here, I'm just going to put my curly brackets around it. Now I'm going to copy that and now I can go to the formula tab name manager say new call this whatever I want Fred and do an equals and that list and now I have that list as my array constants and I can just reference that name in a formula. I didn't have to type every one of those 20 different items, etc. If you're doing this with text, uh, there is an issue here because let's say if I did text join and my delimiter again is a comma, I have to put that in double quotes, put a one there regarding the empty cells. And let's say this was my list here, I hit enter, I have that, but with text, you need to put those in double quotes. So even if I converted those to their values, I'd have to go through and enter double quotes around each one or else Excel will not recognize that properly when using this array constant in your formula. So again, with text and an array constant, you have to make sure that you use double quotes around each one of your text items or Excel will not properly recognize those. And so that's how you can use array constants when you're trying to extract a dynamic list based on a list that is your criteria in Excel. So thanks for watching this tutorial. If you found it beneficial, please share it, like it, or give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe to my blog at my website, excel-bytes.com, or any of the social networks you see below. Have a great day and happy excelling.